What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, you know, I decided to move our Blutonium Bedrockium Drum over here to our Blutonium Dimension. It just kind of makes sense that, you know, it should be in the same area casting into blocks that we are sucking the liquid out of. Now, I have this turned off at the moment. We are not sucking any of the Blutonium out, and I could set it up automatically so, like... The Ender Quarry is directly putting the fluid over here and being cast on the blocks. Well, we've done that before, kind of, in the past uh, on a previous server with Lava Dimension. And what happens is, like, for whatever reason, the Ender Quarry or the Endothermic Pump, would, whichever we're using in that specific case, uh, forgets where it's at and it leaves, like, blank spots. I guess it doesn't really matter since we have an unlimited ocean, but I just don't want to leave, you know, things unslurped out in places where it should be. Um... Yeah, anyway, so I have this thing turned off after we fill up our barrel, then I empty the barrel out, and then I'll stick the barrel back over here eventually when we need more fuel. But yeah, I was looking at what we have over here, and this is the area that's been sucked out a little bit. Yep, it kind of did a couple of blocks right here along this row of chunks, and then it's doing like these full chunks over here. Uh, yeah, so things that I've noticed, the ender quarry with the... The pump upgrade does not replace the liquid with stone. It just sucks it out. So you do get flowing blocks of whatever it is you're sucking out, which kind of sucks, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the endothermic pump has been disabled in this mod pack, so there's no other real thing that we can do to fix it. I guess the only other thing we could do is come through here and place like gravel or sand or something like that to stop the, the liquid from flowing. Anyway, it's not worth it. Uh, yeah, some of these... Whatever reason the the liquid did not flow back into these holes, I don't know why. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all there is. Now I've been watching this thing as it sucks out these individual columns. Um, yeah, it goes all the way down to bedrock, and I don't think there is any any solid blocks down below. I think this is completely 100% liquid world. So I remove the um, what was that <laughs> soak touch upgrade from our. Ender quarry. There's no reason to have that on there. So yeah, we just have the speed upgrade and the uh, the quarry pump upgrade here. So yeah, uh, the amount of blocks we've casted right now, 66,000. That's quite a lot of blocks of this stuff. And then over at our big reactor, I have brought more of the blocks over there. Let's take a look at this. We currently have uh, 22,000 a little over 22,000 blocks. Yeah, we are fine on power for quite some time. Uh, especially with this computer program over here that's regulating our reactor. Like, it's not using a crazy amount of fuel all of the time. It just uses enough to keep the power inside this thing full. So, yeah, we are using it kind of sparingly. And we have basically unlimited fuel, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, things that I've, I kind of screwed up on in the previous episode, I didn't think that there was a way that you could use these translocators to filter. Uh, well, for one thing, you can. If you just right-click anywhere on it except for the little button in the center, there is a filter thing here, so you can place different things for this to filter out. Uh, in this case, we wanted to only pull out the ingots and not the blocks, but without that filter, it still would work because this only has one inventory spot for items to go, and we only had ingots in here. So since this can eject ingots or blocks, and it can only accept ingots because there's, you know, partial stack in there, we didn't even need to set the filter. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, this would have worked regardless, but yeah, I had the filter set for the plutonium ingot just to be double sure. Um, we're getting quite a lot of the cyanite. Yeah, we've already got four, or I'm sorry, 714 blocks of the stuff, so we are good to go there. We're gonna be able to use that for making turbines or whatever else we're gonna do later on. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So today what I'd like to work on is yet again more RF tools. Uh, the reason why we're, <laughs> We started RF tools in the first place is because I wanted to make a world that we could quarry out nether quartz. Or at least just, you know, farm a whole lot of that without having to go to the nether all of the time. So that's what I want to work on today. Um, yeah, I think what we're going to end up doing, we're going to make a dimension that we can actually use to quarry, since I'd like to do that. Um, and not ruin the overworld as much as possible. So we're going to quarry in that kind of a dimension. Uh, we're going to set up some kind of a feature that has a lot of the nether quartz, like tendrils, most likely. Yeah, I think that's going to be kind of cool. And uh, ideally, I would like to make it in extreme hills or what was the other one? 
I can't remember the name of that other biome. There's a few other different biomes that you guys were saying that uh, emeralds spawn in. Um, yeah, and I can't remember the name of it. I thought it was like C or something. Anyway, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to find the biome I want. I'm going to get all this stuff. Was it Canyon? I don't think it was Canyon. Uh, I'm going to find the biome I want. We're going to make another dimension that we can use for quarrying. I'm probably going to make another... Uh, another ender quarry. So I'm going to be spending some time here crafting. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make another ender quarry. We'll probably make like the tier three power upgrade for it. We're just going to make a lot of good stuff and we'll be right back guys. Oh my goodness, guys, getting all this stuff crafted up is such a pain, but it's way easier, way easier than it was the first time we made the ender quarry. That's for sure. We had a lot of this stuff already made up. Um, like the mining laser, for instance, we did not have an extra one of these, but we had all the machines set up. So all I had to do was make the iron turning blink, you know, and hook up the kinetic generator and whatever the turning table thingy I had to make another lathing tool or whatever. But yeah, uh, it's so much easier trying to get this stuff done when you already have all the machines ready to go. You just need to hook them up. But yeah, getting auto crafting for all this stuff is definitely, definitely something I would like to do in the future, although I do remember in FTB Infinity, like the mining laser, for whatever reason, this thing just would not craft. Or maybe it was the iron turning blank, one of these things. Like there was something with the mining laser. I, I remember I wasn't able to auto craft it. And we've seen things so far in this pack. Like if I try and make myself an electronic circuit, the redstone just does not automatically fill for whatever reason. There's just something about IC2 recipes that are kind of weird when trying to use applied energistics to do some of this stuff. So we'll try and figure that out when the time comes. Uh, so I did end up making the uh, Ender Quarry Speed 3 upgrade, and I'm super happy that I decided to mess with the Bibliocraft book copying stuff earlier on. Yeah, so we had all this stuff set up. Um, yeah, I did not have an efficiency one, so I had to enchant a few books on the enchanting table. I think I got a wrecking one and then I got a sharpness one. Then I finally got the efficiency one. You need that to make the, the tier one. Uh, and then we needed efficiency threes for the tier two. So I had to copy those and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, anyway, we got this all done. <laughs> so we have the soak touch. We have the ender quarry. Uh, well, we had the soak touch from before. We I just made the ender quarry. I just made the speed three. Uh, this tesseract I have sourced from our water wheels we are no longer using that we're only powering our stuff off our big reactor and then i just made a four more of these ender markers so i have all the stuff laid out here for a new dimension i think we should have something good going on here so empty dimension tab uh we're gonna do material default uh liquid default terrain flat biome extreme hills plus i'm just going to assume that we'll get emeralds spawning, and then, of course, the dense emeralds with this biome. I hope. <laughs> if not, you know, at least it was a good test, right? Uh, controller single, sky normal, sky normal day, sky normal fog, sky body sun, mod default effect none, material nether quartz ore that is going to be modifying a tendrils dimlet, and then we are doing structure none and then time noon. So hopefully it'll always be daytime. We might use this as some kind of a solar age if solar panels work. I don't know if they do or not in the these kinds of RF tool dimensions. I guess we'll figure that out. So yeah, this is the dimension we're going to do. We're going to call this our, our quarry dimensions. So this should be number four, age four or dim four or whatever. Let's go and store this. This says this is going to cost 32,447 RF per tick to create. It's going to take <laughs> 2,088 ticks to create it. And then once this age is made, I guess to mention, it's going to cost almost 12,000 RF per tick to keep it going. All right, so we are going to depower plutonium. I think we're good with the plutonium for quite some time. Um, Wait, where do we go? Plutonium quarry. All right, so let's put our quarry in here. This has got to build the dimension. Yep, this is going to take a minute. Let's wait for this to happen, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so here we go. Here is our quarry dimension. This should have nether quartz tendrils, so we should have a good way of collecting that nether quartz. It is powering up. We are providing it enough power. Yep. Let us dial it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to make sure... 
to watch out when I go to this plutonium because that's going to depower pretty quickly. Although, like I said before, we do have this phased field generator. So if we do go to a dimension that's unpowered, this will keep us alive and our wyvern flux capacitor will keep that powered. So as long as we got juice, we should be fine. But yeah, let's not go there accidentally. <laughs> so Corey Age, let's go ahead and dial. I'm going to keep calling it an age, but it's just a dimension. Let's check this out. Hopefully everything goes correctly and there's no problems here. Whoosh. All right, there we go. There we go. There is some tendrils. Ah, oh, yeah. All right, so all of our nether quartz problems are now solved. We're just going to have to, you know, mine the stuff, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I set up quarry... Oh, there's snow up here. Weird. Yeah, when I set up a quarry, I'll probably set it up in the sky so I can mine up both the nether quartz and all the stuff down below at the same time. Now, this looks like a really good dimension just by eyeballing it. So this is Extreme Hills Plus. Uh, so hopefully we will get those emeralds. Hopefully we will get the dense emeralds so we can make all the things that we've been wanting to make. Uh, it looks like there are a lot of trees here. Look at this. We got like the cobweb trees. So we should be able to get some cool loot out of here. And it should be bright enough, I think, where these things aren't going to spawn. Uh, there's some unknown dimlets. That's good. Mundane ring. Yeah, just some, you know, random loot stuff. So that's pretty cool. What am I seeing over here? Oh, that's just the RF tools building. Maybe this has some kind of a fancy dimlet in there. Let's go check this one out. What do we got? We got uh, a patron dimlet, <laughs> controller wet, and biome crag. Oh, you know what? I think the crag people are saying that's another one that the emeralds do spawn in. I think that's the one I was trying to think of before. So there's some more unknowns. Here is a seasonal forest and a huge liquid orbs dimlet. That sounds kind of cool. Not sure what what we'd want to make uh, out of huge orbs. And that's going to be a lot of quartz that we'll be able to mine out of this. This is really, really good. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to come over here and set a waypoint. So let us do that now. Well, I guess not really a waypoint. Set my little ender thingy. Uh, so let's add new. We'll call this quarry. Uh, commit. And lock it. Cool. Oh, you know what? I think... Don't I normally call these things? Let's unlock this. Rename. Quarry. Whoops. Dim 4? Isn't that what I do? I think that's what I do. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> but we'll do that anyway. Uh, yeah, lock it. Cool. So now we can warp here whenever. I think the next thing I'm going to do is probably get some angel blocks. I'm going to go up in the sky a little bit. Yeah, probably about like right here or something like that. And put out some markers. I might just mine a bunch of this nether quartz by hand for now, just so we have this, you know, available to do some stuff with. Because I would like to start looking at getting into the applied energistic stuff here pretty quick. And we were ran out of the nether quartz. Also, we're going to need that for the draconic evolution, uh, dragon spawning, and all of this. So anyway, let me go ahead and cut. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, so here we are in the RF tools dimension once again. Uh, the quarry has been set up, and I actually made this like 500 blocks this way and 500 blocks that way. So we have a large area. This thing is going to be quarrying out, and it's going to be going for a while. Now, I went back to the base because I was kind of concerned that we are running this expensive dimension. Plus, we have the ender quarry going with the speed 3 upgrade. I was afraid that we were going to be running out of power, but no. Our big reactor is definitely keeping up, we're keeping our batteries stocked at the base. Uh, I do eventually want to get to the point where we are using the Draconic Evolution mass power storage because that can, you know, obviously store more power than those resident <laughs> flux capacitors we have. And it can also, you know, send and receive more than the 32,000 per uh, flux capacitor. So anyway, that's something that we'll be looking at in the future. We do need a whole lot of the draconic ore in order to do this. Uh, but yeah, obviously, as you can see here, it is snowing. So we have weather in effect in this dimension. So if we were going to set this up to be some kind of a uh, solar farm, for instance, we would need to do something about the weather. Yeah, I did not have a no weather dimlet, so we never put that in uh, this dimension. I know the dimension editor, if we ever do get a no weather... Um, weather, what is it called? Yeah, weather, no thunder, no rain. 
Maybe it is weather. No rain is what we're looking for. So if we ever get this dimlet, we should be able to use the dimension editor and inject that in here. And that should prevent any of this weather. Alternatively, we could, um, yeah, use like the rainmaker from forestry, the rainmaker with a dissipation charge when given a redstone signal, I think, or maybe just when it has the dissipation charge. I can't remember how this works. Either way, uh, with that, it can turn the weather off. And then also Draconic Evolution has a, oh no, it's called a rain. Has a rain sensor, which emits a redstone signal when it's raining. Uh, or we could do the rain tank method that we've done before with <laughs> the build craft pipe and all of this stuff. Yeah, there's a few options that we can do. But right now, since we aren't trying to use this for any solar purposes, yeah, we really don't have to worry about this. Um... So let's go back to the base. And I was checking this out a minute ago. We are in fact collecting emeralds. We had 55 previously. We're now up to 60 and we collected one more dense emerald ore. So both of those do in fact spawn in that dimension. Uh, not only that, uh, we are also collecting the dimensional shard ore, which is good. Uh, we have been collecting nether quartz or this is from the quarry because I was fortuning everything. The only thing that I haven't seen so far is draconium ore. I really do hope that we can get that. Okay, stop with the particles. I really do hope that we can get the draconium ore uh, from that dimension. We need, I think it's 128 of these things to make an RF tools dimlet out of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to need a lot of this stuff in order to make our own dimension with the draconic ore. It is possible there is a dimlet. Uh, draconium, is that what it is? Yeah, there is a dimlet here, rarity six, so we could take apart another rarity six. Um, yeah, take 128 of the draconium ore, use the material absorber and make our own thing. But yeah, we, we're short on the ore. I did try going to the end and looking for another meteor. Let's go to the end real quick. I'll show you guys what I've done. Did that actually earlier to, today before I started recording. So yeah, if we go to here, that's our area. That's the little wither boss killing area. Uh, this was our first meteor. That was our second meteor. And then I think the one that we just discovered a little bit ago is over here. And then since then, I've gone down quite far. I spent a lot of time searching back and forth and I didn't find another one yet. But as soon as we do find another one of those meteors and we collect, you know, 128 of those ores, like I was talking about, we'll definitely look at making our own uh, draconic ore spawned dimension, which is going to be pretty awesome. Cool. So uh, the next thing that I'd like to work on. Yeah, I think we've been messing with the RF tools a lot recently. The next thing I'd like to work on, we haven't really done much with bees since we got to the industries and the Imperial a little while ago. Uh, I have been collecting the stuff from those bees and I've been processing the honey and all of this. So like the pollen, for instance, we have 2000 of it and the royal jelly, we have like 2200 of it. Yeah, we got a lot of this stuff. Uh, I have noticed that some of the bees have died off uh, the princesses in there. And I assume that was because the princesses were the ignoble stock. They were not the pristine bees. So yeah, they only have so many life cycles in an apiary or some kind of an automation machine before they do in fact die off. Um, yeah, first, uh, we had a couple of die off here. The ones that make the pollen. <laughs> yeah, these had died off a couple of times and I replaced them. And then I noticed that some of the ones that make the royal jelly had died off. That's why there's some rocky drones in here because I put another rocky princess to convert it back into an imperial. But I've gone through and made sure all of these are pristine. So these should not die off at all. But yeah, it did take them a while before they actually did die off. But it looks like it is in fact the case that they do in this mod pack. Previous mod packs, I think like Grey Skies or whatever, the ignoble stock didn't matter. But yeah, it does matter in expert mode in Infinity Evolved. Anyway, cool. So the next thing that we need to do with these guys is we need to start looking at making alvearies. The alvearies are really important because uh, the apiaries are limited to three frames only. Whereas the alvearies, you can put in like pretty much every single block as a frame block, which means you can increase the production rate really fast, or you can put in multiple soul frames and almost guarantee that every single breed will be a mutation. So these are things that I want to look at, but in order to make the alviary, 
Uh, yeah, in order to make these blocks here, we need to get the scented paneling, and the scented paneling requires uh, some planks, royal jelly, pollen, and beeswax in a carpenter full of honey. Yep. So I have been preparing for this. So we have a honey drum here, and actually both of these are full, and we had a little bit of extra honey, I think. Yeah, these didn't get fully squeezed, these honeydews. Uh, but yeah, we have the honey for the carpenter. Uh, we're going to need some impregnated casings. I can't remember if we had extras or not. Yeah, we have 11 of those. I think it is 27 impregnated casings or alviary blocks that we need per alviary. So 27 times eight of these scented panelings. Yeah, it's it's a lot of stuff that we need. Uh, the beeswax too. We got 1300 of that, so we should be good. All right, so I tell you guys what, I'm going to try and get some machines together here. I think we're gonna leave these alone and I'm gonna build some extra ones specifically for alviary creation. So yeah, let me go ahead and get on that and we will be right back. Okay guys, so here we are on the second level in our B area and I've kind of expanded this out now. Now that we have the nether quartz, we can make you know all the uh, laboratory blocks we want so we can start expanding this. Uh, this wall over here goes about the size that we have dug out underneath. It's just about the same distance and we have a little bit of open space back here. I don't know if we're even going to build anything back here. I guess we could make this like an L shape room or maybe even a U shape and wrap it around here if we need more room. Uh, I really don't know how much space we're going to need for all of the genetic stuff. I definitely know that what I'm going to build right here is probably going to be temporary and will be moved later on. At least that is what I think is going to happen. So anyway, uh, I made myself a new carpenter. If I could get over here. <laughs> yeah, I made myself a carpenter. We are going to power this from down below if we have enough power cables here. I think we might. We just need to pull the power from over here somewhere. Where does, uh, you know what? I thought the power was a little bit closer. We might not have enough power cables. Well, we might be able to pull it off one of these. Let's see, the power goes, oh man. We get to the power from there? Not really, that's the fluctuating item docked. Yeah, this is actually not <laughs> gonna be as easy as I thought it was gonna be. So anyway, we guess we can just go ahead and run the power cable over here. I'm not sure if the 20 that I had is gonna be enough. Now, hopefully, it will be, how many we have left, four? Okay, it was enough. Yeah, I was kinda hoping we could pull the power like off from over here and then down over and save some cables, but the way that was all set up up there, yeah, not really the case. Okay, so anyway, we got power to our carpenter now. Doesn't really show anything though. <laughs> yeah, it's powered, so we need to give this thing some fluid. We need to give this thing some items. So what I'm thinking is what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a little bit of applied energistics here. Go up, go up. All right, so we need to get ourselves an interface. Yeah, one of these guys. Don't need any more of these blocks on me at the moment. Um, yeah, the stuff that's down below right now, it's not quite as light lit up as I would like. Like the area that we had finished over here is pretty bright, but on this side, yeah, we got torches on the floor and all this. I need to get some painted glowstone over here so we can get the light on the ground evenly. But yeah, we'll work on that some other time. Okay, so the idea that I have is we are going to use that carpenter, or I'm sorry, this uh, interface on the carpenter. So I'll stick that right there. We need to get uh, Emmy Keeble over here, obviously, to get this thing powered. Uh, we are going to config this thing so it has uh, beeswax. It's going to have the pollen, the royal jelly, and wasn't there one? Oh, yeah, I guess the planks. Okay. So it's going to have these things available for us to pull out of this. And then we're going to stick that into the carpenter. And I can't remember if it matters if it's from the top or the side or the front or whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to go ahead and use some item translocators from, from this guy into here. Now there is a way that we can set the maximum amount for this filter that it pulls into this guy. And I think I want to keep this at one stack just so we're not filling all the way up full of beeswax and there's no room for the pollen or any of this other stuff. And yeah, we just want it so it keeps one stack of each of those. So there's a nugget that we can put onto this thing and I think it might be the Diamond nugget. I'm gonna have to go and uh, take a look at all the different <laughs> configuration options that are available for the translocator. I think it's diamond. It might not be, 
but we're going to use a diamond anyway. If it's not, I'll swap it over to the correct one. See so yeah, there's like uh, redstone, glowstone, these diamond nuggets that you can put on there, and there's a few other things. Oh, yeah, now it says regulate, so that is definitely what we want. So regulate, this would only have one of each of these. We want it to have not, uh, oh, I guess I can right click to increase and decrease. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> this is acting weird. Okay. So there's a stack. Okay, I guess there's just a way that you have to click this, double click it. All right, I don't know. <laughs> this is obviously a way that I'm doing this wrong. Oh man, I just clicked the wrong thing. Okay, so right click, or left click adds the stack, right click takes away the stack. And then as far as, yeah, I think like double clicking overwrites it. I don't know. It's kind of funky the way that works. I'm sure I'll figure that out sometime later on once I get uh, used to this mod a little bit more. But yeah, this should only keep one stack of each of these items in this carpenter if this is working properly. That should be the next thing we should test out. Uh, then we're also going to need the honey because the carpenter to make these alvearies or I guess the scented panelings needs honey. So we'll probably grab all three of these and I can use liquid translocators to uh, make like a flow, I guess. So each of these barrels dump into the, the next one kind of a thing. Anyway, uh, we can just put the honey right here with the liquid translocator. And squirt that in there. Cool, so that's going. Yeah, so now we just need to get this interface hooked up and I can't remember if there's any AE cables nearby. Um, Actually, no, I don't think there is any at all. I think we have this main trunk over here and that's about the closest. Oh, well, maybe we can take off one of these and then go straight down. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'll figure that out. Let me go and get that cable ran real quick and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, it looks like all of this stuff is now going in here just like we wanted. One stack of each of these different items. Now, I just need to go in here and set the pattern. So, I believe it was three of those. Some wax here, pollen, and then royal jelly on top. Yeah, and that makes the scented paneling. Cool. So, this will go ahead and make these and go to this output. I guess the next thing I should do is get another... Uh, thingy. Man, this thing goes slow, doesn't it? This is going to be one of those things where you're just going to have to set up and let it run overnight, I think. <laughs> or make a whole bunch of these carpenters, which I probably don't want to do. Yeah, I think if we do, like, another translocator in such a way, and maybe if I run this cable like so, kill that. Oop, I need another cable in here, don't I? Yeah. Uh, I could do another item translocator over here and then pull those scented panelings back into the AE system, so that would be completely automatic let's go ahead and do that real quick do i have any no i don't i really should just go and make like a lot of these things <laughs> okay so there we go got two more item translocators all right let's get this set up so we are taking these items and sending them back to the ae system or the me system like this and this and we want that all right so the center panelings as soon as they get me get put back into our interface here which gets sucked back into the system so upstairs we should see the grand total of how many we've created we don't have to wait or we don't have to let this thing make a stack and then pull out the stack and then all of that so yeah this is pretty cool so if we go upstairs i'm curious how many we have probably like six or seven right something like that yeah seven of them right now so yeah, that is really cool. So the next thing I want to do is do the do something pretty similar except with the um, impregnated casings because we're going to need a few more of those. Uh, I went over, we'd ran out of seed oil previously, so I went over to Wellington Towers, whatever, and I grabbed a whole bunch of spinach, turned them into seeds. Now we are squeezing seeds to make seed oil. And it's 250 millibuckets per impregnated casing. So that's going to take a minute for us to get all of the seed oil required. Now there's also seed oil dimlet, special seed. No, this one, liquid seed oil dimlet. So we can make an ocean world completely out of the seed oil and I never have to craft it again. But that's one of those things like I was talking about last episode. Sure, we can make dimensions for everything, but then that kind of takes away the fun of setting up automations for a lot of things. So I don't know. 
Uh, I think this is one of those things I'm not going to do that for. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I think, guys, I think since we have a lot of stuff that just needs to happen over time, we'll wrap the episode up here for today. Uh, hopefully, next time that we look at the bees, we'll have enough of all these scented panelings and the impregnated casings and all this stuff to make our alviary. And we can check that out for the first time in this series. Yeah, it's been a while since I've messed with those alviaries, that's for sure. I've been using Gendistry in a lot of the more recent mod packs. So yeah, definitely something I'm looking forward to checking out. I want to get to the Infinity Beast so we can unlock Gendistry and start, you know, really getting deep into all of the different bees, all the effects and all the different materials they can generate for us. Oh, you know what? One more thing. I was looking at our ME system here just a second ago. Check it out. We got three dense emerald ores and now we're up to 80 emerald ores. So yeah, definitely that dimension is going to pay off. That's for sure. Uh, we'll be able to get the Draconic or Wyvern stuff here pretty quick. Pretty happy about that. Still looking for the Draconic Ore. I want to make ourselves a dimension full of the stuff or at least a tendril or something. I don't want to go too crazy. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.